I'm Ocean Robbins, CEO of the Food Revolution Network and co-host of the Food Revolution Summit. I want to congratulate you again on your choice to join us. This is the first in a series of videos we'll be sharing to help you start activating your own food revolution even before the summit begins. In today's video, I'm going to get a little personal. I'm going to share with you my family's food story. It's a story with rags, riches, heart attacks, and healing. It's a story of ice cream, 31 flavors of ice cream, and it's also a story of health and transformation. I'm also going to give you some of my top insights on the history, reality, and future of food. And I'll let you know more about what to expect in this summit. Spoiler alert, it's going to be awesome. So to begin the family story, we need to go back a few generations. My grandfather, Urban Robbins, was the co-founder of an ice cream company. You might have heard of it. It's called Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. My dad grew up with an ice cream cone-shaped swimming pool. He was groomed from childhood to one day take over and run the family company, and he took it upon himself to be intimately familiar with every flavor that Baskin Robbins made. But when my dad was in his early 20s, his uncle Bert Baskin, who was my grandpa's brother-in-law and business partner, became seriously ill with heart disease that quickly took his life. My dad's uncle Bert was a big man, and he always enjoyed the family product. He loved life. And it was tragic that despite all of his business success, his life was taken from him in his early 50s. I never even got to meet my dad's uncle because this was all before I was born, so I only know about him from family stories. Around that time, as he faced the loss of his business partner, my grandpa invited my dad to join him in the company. Now, my dad thought about it long and hard, but in the end, he said no. He simply could not spend his life selling a product that might contribute to making people sick, including perhaps even his own uncle. He walked away from the company and from any access to the family wealth to, as we jokingly say in our family, follow his own rocky road. My mom and dad moved to a little island off the coast of Canada where they built a one-room log cabin. I was born in that cabin to parents who were living simply, growing most of their own food, practicing yoga and meditation for several hours every day, and naming their kid Ocean. That's me. As I grew up, our family moved down to California, and my dad wound up becoming a best-selling author on topics of food and health. The media had a lot of fun with his story, and they called him the rebel without a cone. His book sold more than two million copies. One of his readers ended up, remarkably enough, being his own father, my grandpa, Irvin Robbins. In 1990, Grandpa Irv, who'd always eaten a standard American diet, plus a bunch of ice cream on top, was suffering from serious heart disease, diabetes, and many other health problems. His doctors told him he probably only had a few years to live. But then Grandpa Irv decided to follow his son's advice. He started eating a lot less processed foods and a lot more vegetables. He even gave up ice cream. And before long, he'd gotten off all his high blood pressure and diabetes medications. He'd lost 30 pounds. His golf game had improved seven strokes. He wound up living another 18 healthy years. Around that same time, my dad and I were running marathons together. And I'm going to always remember so fondly how my grandpa used to cheer us on when we passed him while he was out taking his daily hour-long walk. So we have seen in our own family the powerful impact that food can have on your life and on your health. If my grandpa, who was always known as one stubborn cookie, and who manufactured and sold more ice cream than any other human being on this planet's history, could make radical dietary changes, could even give up ice cream, then I think there's hope for all of us. And on the other side of positive changes is a healthier and a more fulfilling life. And that is the kind of transformation that I know is possible for you and for your loved ones. That's how powerful food is. As you might be able to tell, I grew up with a pretty unusual dad. He was the renegade who walked away from an ice cream fortune, and he was also a powerful example of standing for values and of what can happen when we truly walk our talk. I got started pretty early myself, and in 1990, when I was 16, I founded a nonprofit organization called YES. I directed it for 20 years. 
We led workshops and seminars for more than 650,000 young leaders from 65 nations. Our goal was to empower the next generation of global change makers to stand up for healthy people and a healthy planet. One of the things that I saw as I worked with diverse people all over the world is that everybody eats. I also saw that the American way of eating was being exported around the globe. I saw that as people moved away from their traditional local foods and traditional diets, and as they started eating more KFC, McDonald's, and Coca-Cola, people's waistlines were expanding, and so were their rates of disease. I also saw that as GMOs and pesticide-dependent agriculture were spreading, so were rates of cancer, farmer suicide, and environmental pollution. So in 2012, I moved on from directing YES to join forces with my dad directly, and we launched the Food Revolution Network. We and our more than 250,000 members are working for healthy, sustainable, humane, and delicious food for everyone. So why, you might ask, are we calling for a food revolution? Some people think that's kind of strong language. Well, frankly, with where things have gotten, I think a revolution in our food is about the only sane option we've got if we want to be healthy and if we want a healthy world. This is no time for food that's a little bit less toxic. This is not a time for a little less pesticides, hormones, antibiotics, added sugars, additives, colorings, and processing. If we truly want health, then this is a time for a revolution. The way I see it, Food 1.0 is about survival. If you could get enough calories to fill your belly and carry on for another day, that was success. And for many people in the world, tragically, survival is still the goal. In Food 2.0, which is the dominant reality in much of the developed world today, the fundamental organizing principle of food is commerce. Modern supermarkets may stock more than 500 different kinds of breakfast cereals. We've got a stunning array of flavors, textures, and styles to choose from. And most of us can access food growing 6,000 miles away and process two or 10,000 miles away at our local store. Our modern food system is financially profitable for a few, but it has become morally bankrupt for all of us. In Food 2.0, it's now considered normal to eat food that's laced with sugars, chemicals, flavorings, colorings, pesticides, hormones, GMOs, even antibiotics. Our food system has become in many ways toxic and it is now contributing to epidemic rates of illness. In the US, more than two thirds of the population is now overweight or obese. And heart disease and stroke are killing more than 700,000 people every year. The National Institutes of Health reports that in the 1960s, less than 2% of America's kids had a chronic health condition. Today, it's over 25%. And one in three American children is expected to get diabetes in their lifetime. As you probably already know, all of these conditions are directly linked to lifestyle and food choices. Food 2.0 brings us a food system that is systematically cruel to farm workers and animals, unsustainable for our planet, and it's killing millions of people. And that is why it's time for Food 3.0. In Food 3.0, the central organizing principle of our food systems is health for people and for the planet. Food 3.0 means vastly lower rates of chronic illness, which can save us trillions of dollars in medical care and lead to a healthier and a more capable population. Food 3.0 means a more sustainable and productive economy. And let me be very clear, I've got no problem with people making money. I just wanna see healthy profits made from healthy food. And I wanna thank you for all the ways that you take a stand for a transformation in our food systems. You stand for a food revolution every time that you choose real food over processed junk. Every time you say yes to local, organic, natural, sustainable, fair trade, and non-GMO food that's produced with respect for farm workers, animals, people, the planet, and your own health. And every time you choose to stand for food as not just a commodity, but also a community, a web of relationships that literally becomes us. In the Food Revolution Summit, you're gonna get support from some of the guiding lights of Food 3.0. The knowledge in this summit will distill a lifetime of work from some of the most courageous and game-changing food leaders on the planet. You'll get leading-edge nutritional insights and knowledge that could not only help you, but also help you support the people that you love. 
The summit runs from April 30 to May 8. On each day of the summit, you'll hear my dad and colleague, best-selling author John Robbins, personally conducting three more penetrating interviews. We'll broadcast those interviews at 8, 9, and 10 a.m. Pacific time. And, and I'll be there with you after each interview to share what I got from it, to answer your questions, and to help you put it into action. If you can't join in live, then you can catch any of the interviews on 24-hour replay. So now you know a little about my family story and why my dad and I are both so passionate about the food revolution. In the next video, you're gonna get to meet my dad and John Robbins. You'll see why he's become an inspiration to millions of people. And you will hear his take on what kind of food revolution we really need and how the Food Revolution Summit can help you to thrive in every dimension of your life. I urge you to watch the next video in entirety because some of what my dad will share might surprise you. It might even shock you. And I promise it will also inspire you. I also want to invite you to spread the word about this summit to your friends and to your loved ones. Food is the foundation of health and health is the greatest gift you could ever give someone. When you tell loved ones about this summit, you're making an investment in their well-being that could last a lifetime. Step by step, one bite at a time, we can change the world and we are changing the world together. I wish you fabulous and healthy food.